Hey there, welcome to Woohoo Wednesday. So many of you know that we work with a lot of Fortune 100 CPG companies, and this might sound familiar. So you go into an ideation session, whether it's uh, facilitated by an outsider like us or someone inside your team has facilitated it, you come up with all these ideas, you're pushing the envelope, you're really pulling the poles, and you're pushing some of these edges that are just really, really fun spaces. You get out of this ideation and you think, I'm gonna do something with these ideas. So you put them in your deck and you present them to a VP and the VP or the senior VP says, Hmm, I think I might want to tweak this part. And then you go, okay, I'll tweak that part. Then you put it in another PowerPoint, you present it to another VP, and he or she says, well, maybe just instead of it just being for women, it could be for women and men, and then we would have a bigger opportunity. So you go, okay, well, it was really a women's product, but whatever, I'll just try to make it more mainstream, and on and on and on. And someone puts it through a quant screen, and you validate it, and meets all your internal metrics, and you launch it, and it's safe and vanilla, and you're not really excited about it, but it does fine. Or maybe it does better than fine. And your stakeholders, your bosses, and their shareholders who want safe returns are happy. But are you happy? And is this building a sustainable innovation culture for your team, for your company? Is it bringing joy to consumers? So that brought me to thinking about another thing that I've been doing lately with my team. We've been coaching a group of startups as part of the SKU CPG Accelerator. It's a really cool group. It's the first and leading accelerator in the country solely dedicated to CPG brands. And I thought I would just introduce you to a few of these people because I want you to just step outside of your big company lens and look at it from a different perspective and think about all of the resources that you have that you could be using differently. One of the things that I say to our clients is, how much money is in the room right now? When you look at your salary and your bonuses and your insurance and your laptop and your vacation and your other bonuses and your 401k and you've got three VPs, two directors, a manager and an associate manager in the room and no one's empowered to make a decision, how much money is in the room in that hour? How much are you talking about competitors? How much are you talking about consumers? How much are you talking about trends? Or are you presenting to each other? And I want you to just take a different perspective. I want you to think about what it would be like if you were a startup and you had two or three people on your team, you're working out of your house and you're launching a brand that you have so much passion for. Take a look. Hi, my name is Casey Rivers. I'm with Meridian Hive and we make the best draft mead on the planet. Hi, I'm Maureen Brown with Mosey Baby and we help people get pregnant at home when intercourse either isn't an option or isn't working. All right, when we talk about a shortage of ideas, we have no shortage of ideas. The power is not in the idea, but in the execution and the implementation of those ideas. So we have no shortage of ideas. Uh, my pastime is dreaming, and we are ready to take on the world with our company, Mosey Baby. I think these larger companies don't realize the power that they already have by owning the distribution channel. We're having to go out and build that ourselves, and that takes cash and that takes experienced people. So if we had the resources of one of the big superpower companies out there, we would love to dive into some research and show some very solid numbers about how effective our product is. Because we see it, but we really need to get those big research um, studies done behind it. Hi, my name is Genevieve Gilbreth. I'm Managing Director of SKU, the first and leading consumer products accelerator. So one of the reasons that big companies end up overpaying for innovative brands is that they really just don't have the ecosystem and the structure set up to innovate efficiently. You know, there's no lack of really good ideas, but one of the things that happens is that the larger companies have so many more shareholders and they have a lot, a lot more restrictive um, responsibilities to a P&L and a culture that doesn't really promote the same kind of risk taking that you see in entrepreneurial cultures and companies. If I was sitting in a big company trying to help them innovate, one of the first things I would do would be to figure out how to have external relationships with ecosystems of makers and entrepreneurs because that is where the the interesting, innovative, authentic ideas are coming from, and not just the ideas, but the young companies who've really proven and tested these ideas. So they're still very early stage, but you know they're they're getting traction. And if they had larger companies, you know, reaching down and providing some of the infrastructure and resources and R and D that would help them be more successful, then I think they would scale a lot faster. And I think there's an opportunity for some really interesting partnerships to happen between e entrepreneurial ecosystems 
and large CPG companies. It just hasn't happened yet. So you just heard from a few people from SKU, and I've had the pleasure of being around SKU for two years and seeing these startups just grow from baby brands to bigger brands and brands that you might want to have in your family of brands someday. But what they all have in common is that they have a point of view. Some of them are taking a polarizing position that's not as safe. It is more meaningful to consumers. It's breaking past the clutter. And these are the things that you're trying to do. These are the things that you want that add value to your company. But guess what? They also add value to the lives of your employees. People want to create. We all want to create something of value. We don't want to be presenting PowerPoints to each other all day. So how are you going to use this inspiration to think about your team differently, to think about how you're incenting your team, to think about whether you're set up for failure so that you can fail a lot to really let ideas live long enough so that you can get to the big ideas that really excite. So I hope that you can just think about really how are we spending our time? How are we spending our resources? What would these little baby brands have so much envy for that we can do tomorrow, that we could do so easily, that we should be launching way bigger ideas because we've got such a head start and all we need is the passion and the excitement and the guts that these little baby brands have that maybe we aren't set up to have. I really hope you think about this. Have a good week.